Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. And welcome to our third webinar on Industry 4.0 topics. This time, uh, we have our awesome guest from Brazil, from uh, a like from we host a person who is one of the best lecturers and researchers in the Industry 4.0 topics. We'll talk a little bit about amazing uh, aspects of fourth industrial revolution. And uh, we'll know a little bit more about digital transformation, digital business models, the four dimensions of uh, Industry 4.0. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, please meet uh, Professor Ayala. Hello, hey. Master. Hello, hello, Magic. Nice to How meet you. How are you doing? You. Nice to you. Nice to see you all. Uh, so let's talk a little about Industry for Zero and thank you for this invitation to share a little what we are doing, what we are uh, learning and researching about Industry for Zero and also applying in companies here in Brazil. Cool, amazing. So could you maybe, as for the introduction, tell us a little bit more about yourself, what you're doing, what is your origin, like how come that you're in the in this okay, field. Okay, so I, I am a professor in a federal university of Rio Grande do Sul, that is in the very south of, uh, of Brazil, uh, is the best federal uh, university here in, in Brazil. Uh, we are part of the post-graduation program of uh, industrial engineering also. It's, this is mm -hmm. one of the best in, in Brazil. Uh, and we, uh, I am the co-director uh, of a research group na named MIO, that is the Organizational Engineering Group. Uh, and we uh, run research applied to, to companies. Uh, and also we have a, a, a big, uh, strong relation, uh, relation with uh, association of companies here in Brazil. So uh, we are, I am the coordinator of a, of a network from the south of Brazil, the network of Industry for Zero, that congregates more than uh, 29 uh, or 29 uh, entities that all of them are uh, association of companies, universities that want to make the Industry for Zero to happen uh, here in Brazil. Also, uh, we participate as uh, specialists in the Industry for Zero Chamber uh, from from Brazil, from the Ministry of Science and Technology and Innovation here in Brazil, where we think uh, the, all the, the policies and what we can do also to, uh, to improve the application of Industry 4.0 uh, here in Brazil. So some, some projects that we uh, develop with, with companies to apply to help these companies to uh, de uh, develop their roadmap to Industry 4.0. So uh, all the, the things I will share with you here are things where, that we learn uh, working with the companies in the, this path towards industry for zero. Yeah, so. Sure, sure. So what you're saying is that your research group actually works with companies and help them like improve and go exactly. towards the direction of uh, of uh, like the fourth industrial revolution exactly right? exactly exactly so we have some uh, companies that they uh, they see the the concept of industry for zero but that they are not sure how to implement in their in their company uh, and also uh, some companies they start to to implement industry for zero as as technologies it's a uh, apply it in silos inside the, the companies. So we help them to align this implementation of technologies and also to develop the capabilities of the people that will work with this uh, uh, Industry for Zero uh, implementation in their company. And they organize this, we organize this path. So one of the things that we, we saw in, uh, in companies that they in, they want to start to, to implement, they hear about the industry for zero and they want to implement uh, the, the technologies. But first we say, no, you need to start where first to, to understand why you want to implement the, this industry for zero. What is your target? Uh, because the technologies, they come as a mean, not as, as, as an object, yet, as a final objective. The yeah, it's, of it's, the, of it's the, it just, uh, it, it's an enhancement. It's it's. An enabler, right? Exactly. Uh, okay, so 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 why? 
coming like with, you have started this uh, obviously i need to ask a, a second question so why should companies pursue the industry 4.0 topics like okay. because we have lean management we have six sigma we have uh, total quality management we have all these awesome uh, paradigms yeah. of of uh, management especially like Sorry. factory uh, uh, management in the factory uh, line so why should we even care about yeah. the fourth industrial revolution. Yeah. Um, Industry for Zero comes um, as a new uh, stage of productivity and also flexibility in companies. So what we have here uh, from, from companies is they improve it a lot with the, with the Six Sigma, with the implementation of Lean. And of, of, uh, for example, we have a company that they say that they all the years they improve their productivity in more than two digits, so more than ten percent of uh, improvement of productivity by using lean and by using quality uh, tools. But then they they stop it. They they reach a limit that they cannot anymore uh, improve. So they then they they implemented the industry for zero to, and then again they have this two digits uh, improvement in in productivity. So this is a why of, of, or in terms of productivity, for instance, but um, we, we need to understand that um, the industry for zero path is one, or the industry for zero is one concept for each company. So first, the company, they, they need to, 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 to ask this question, why I want industry for zero? So you can, you can implement industry for zero to improve your productivity, you can have industry for zero to improve your quality. Maybe it's not about increase the volume just, but you want to, to have the, the best quality ever of your product. And also you can implement industry for zero for flexibility. This is something uh, we, we see here in, in Brazil that is different uh, than the, the original concept of, uh, of industry for zero implementation in, in Germany maybe. Because here the companies, the same company, they produce a lot of different products in the same plant, so in the same factory. So they need industry for zero to improve their flexibility, to to make less setup, to to change, uh, to make uh, the size of the of the production one size or, or not not necessary uh, one batch, uh, one size, uh, one number or, or one product. Uh, for batch, but at least that, you know, to, they need to go uh, near this flexibility because they need to produce, for instance, we have a, a company here that is Lenovo, that is the uh, company mm -hmm. yeah. of, of computers. So we talked with the, with, the, with the director of this company and they said that um, the Lenovo factory in Brazil is the only one in the whole world that produce different uh, equipments uh, in the in the same line, you know. So this is why it's important to to ask why this question that you. you but you why is this happening? Brazil. Because this is interesting for our non-Brazilian uh, uh, audience. So why is it happening that uh, Brazilian uh, manufacturing companies operate this way? What because, happened? Because uh, because um, in Europe uh, you have this uh, you have the companies that produce their uh, they have a, a biggest public because you have all the, the whole Europe to sell the product. Here in Brazil, you have the same fa the same factory that have to produce different products for different uh, parts of Brazil. Also, the 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 customers we have different uh, type of customers here in uh, in Brazil because you we are a one country, but we are we say usually say that we are different countries in one because we are a very big country with 200 million, more than 240 million uh, inhabitants. So you have different public and then the fa these factories, also these factories in Brazil, they produce also for you know, Latin America. So Argentina that is near here, Bolivia, uh, the other Colombia, for instance, so the, the other countries. So that is why they need these factories to, to you don't have a lot of of, of customers for one product, but you have a lot of customers for different products. So you need to reach these different uh, Okay, so we needs. have this moment. 
So basically, there is this moment that demand is is uh, that so huge that you need to adapt and you need to be super flexible. When exactly. It comes to production. Exactly. So uh, what is what is also happening in the in the other countries now? We see that uh, that the customer are they want uh, more customization in their in their product, but it's hard to reach this customization with the if the technologies are. Uh, are uh, installed in our companies to produce big volumes of the same product. So this is one of the of the challenge that the industry for zero are helping companies also to 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 adapt themselves to the to this new characteristic of the customers. Okay, so uh, so so as starting from why, like why would I need this? So I understand that there is a certain productivity uh, paradigm, like with yeah. lean or or. TQM, and then it stops. You need to look for something else, and potentially industry for all is something that may be the new avenue of growth. Yeah, exactly, exactly. This is a, it's a good point that you bring because uh, we have um, industry for zero application for improve as an as an efficiency driver, but also as a growth driver. And when we talk with us. Of industry for zero as a growth driver, we need to see to stop thinking in industry for zero only for applying in our plant, in our uh, shop floor. We need to understand that industry for zero come also as a growth driver, bringing the possibility to to have a, a smart solutions, new business models, to be more innovative also in our products. And then uh, we come to to. Um, to one of the main outputs that we we had in these uh, years of, of research, that is, we understood that okay, we have this model of industry for zero that is the one presented by uh, Akatech. Yeah, so we have these uh, steps of industry for zero, the industry for zero index that Akatech present. That is okay. You start with with connectivity, visibility, transparency, predictive capacity and then adaptability. And then the last stage of, of, of the proposition of Akatech original model, that is the starting, that it was uh, from, uh, was coined in, in 2011, um, they reached to have a, a completely autonomous uh, factory. But this is um, like, um, like seeing industry for zero only for, for the shop floor, and from the automation uh, perspective, we uh, we can lose some other perspective, and then we reach to uh, our uh, four smart uh, framework of industry for zero. That is, it is published to the in the International Journal of Production Economy. Maybe we can share after the the article one of the the most cited articles in this uh, in this journal. Uh, that is, we propose four 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 dimension of industry for zero. So you have, of course, the, the dimension of the smart uh, manufacturing, of the technologies applied to, to, the, to, to the shop floor, but also you have to understand that you have also the smart working uh, mm -hmm. dimension. What is the smart working dimension? It's, you have all these technologies, artificial intelligence, uh, VR, uh, AR also, uh, uh, and, and other technologies that you can use to support the work of workers. So don't think industry for zero, industry for zero as as a, um, as a replacement of workers. What we saw, uh, we have a, a we run we have run a, a project with a, with MIT that is work of the future. Uh, we run it here in Brazil. The MIT is, is, is running this research in, in the whole world. The world. Um, and we saw interview, we interviewed with 60, more than 60 companies here in Brazil. Uh, the the, the half, half of them uh, providers of Industry for Zero, the other half provider of uh, adopter of Industry for Zero. And all of them said one of the main pillars of our implementation of Industry for Zero is people. So you need to stop thinking in, in the automation will take the job of the people, but you need to see how the technologies can support the work because you will need these workers and to, to make, and you, they, they, 
the technology of industry, industry for zero will take these uh, workers to a new stage of productivity, a new stage uh, taking decisions uh, supported by, by the data, by the big data, by the artificial mm -hmm. intelligence. Okay, so if I understand it correctly, um, so we already covered two dimensions. One dimension is smart factory, which is a shop floor, which is like a regular thing that we natural we understand as uh, like increasing efficiency, like producing faster, producing more That's things good. with uh, better quality, all these things that this is like effectively an extension of the traditional management, like methods like, like lean management, etc. But additional uh dimension and we still have additional to to, to cover but like yeah. the, a, another one is smart working exactly so in this case it's a uh, so it, we, what we need to think is like how you can leverage these industrial tools in order to uh make like your work of your employees like faster but also safer uh like effectively better right exactly. and that so what I understand is like these tools, like smart working, doesn't necessarily like replace jobs. So this is not like Adam Smith uh, sewing machines and burning the sewing machines in 19th yeah. century England. This is rather, hey, we need to embrace industry for all. This will actually create more jobs. Yeah, exactly. Rather exactly. So than like different jobs. Companies. Yeah, yeah. That is a, a nice uh, uh, point that you bring because. We have run another uh, study with the Ministry of, the, of Education here in Brazil. And in this, um, this, this study, we understood that uh, we have a new, a new worker from, that arise from in, the, in the digitalization, from the digitalization, but also from industry for zero. Uh, but this new, new worker, you have a... a a rest killing of them, yeah. You need to 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 prepare your workers to this new uh, stage, uh, bring that by, by industry for zero, and uh, also what is interesting, you you need to be prepared if you will imp implement industry for zero. You need to understand what kind of capabilities my workers will will need to work with this technology because it's not uh, maybe sometimes. Uh, the practitioners think that uh, technologies is just plug and play. It's, it's just I I I br I I bought the the technology and okay, it's working and I have the output. No, it's not like that. You need people to work with this technology. For instance, we have a very big company, multinational company here in in, in Brazil that is uh, Braskem. is a is a company of um, a, of a plastic. Uh, mm -hmm. it's a, a big, a big multinational, um, and they they started to implement. A, they wanted to implement algorithm of uh, artificial intelligence to prevent um, maintenance. Okay, the, the one of the most things that we we we, we hear about industry for zero is the the predictive maintenance. So they started first. They they started uh, saying okay. We need to develop an algorithm of uh, artificial intelligence that don't need any intervention of a, a human being. Okay, so they they spend like one year developing this uh, this super algorithm, and then they they realize that after they change anything in they they make the maintenance in the in the machines, they need to change again. They, this algorithm and they need to work more months to uh, to to adapt again the the algorithm because the the things change it. So they realize after this year they realize that no industry for zero also in the to pre, to predictive maintenance is a mix about one algorithm a more simple algorithm and the knowledge of my uh, technicians because together I give this data to the to the technicians and then they take the decision and they say okay. This we need to make the maintenance, or this machine will break or have the possibility to break. So they proceed the the, the maintenance. So this is the mix that we need to understand, uh, and we want to bring with this smart working dimension. Okay, so this is 
Uh, something that, like previously, we actually had this webinar in Polish, but uh, Tomek Koshmi there, uh, he's from the group Architects for Business. So he's an industrial for all consultant. And he said that very often companies, uh, what they implement is that they, they try to, you know, build a, either like a super advanced software or they purchase a software for a uh, hundred thousand of dollars. Uh, which at the end of the day doesn't really uh, help that much with decision making, for instance, yes. because you don't even have people to staff over them or you don't have the capabilities inside of your organization to ensure that this thing will actually work, right? So yes. this is not that the software will replace uh, people, right? This, is, this yes. is only an enhancement. And if you don't have these internal capabilities, this won't fly. Yeah, yeah, and also yeah, we saw some companies that they uh, they don't understand this that industry for zero uh, doesn't doesn't came for 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 replace uh, people, and then when they want to implement the technology, they make their their account. Okay, if I implement this this uh, this technology, I will replace three employees, and then they count. They make that count. Okay, three salaries for for two years and then they want to have a payback from the, from the technology. They don't have this payback from, if you just think in people, you need to, to, to understand that this will increase your quality, your productivity, or maybe your flexibility. And that there is why, uh, or where we come your payback of your, of your investment. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. So is this like, so effectively this is, how you rather should think of it is like I have like hundred employees on my on my on my on my shop floor, and uh, what I uh, should do is to actually uh, give them the industry 4.0 tools exactly. to maintain these jobs uh, because if I don't go forward with industrial for industrial revolution. I won't have these jobs anymore because I will go yeah. off the market, right? So, exactly. this is, so this is actually not about like replacing jobs. This is actually about saving exactly. them. Exactly. At least this is what, exactly. what I see. Like we are talking, we have our expert Ian Khan, who is an expert in AI and future of like, how will AI replace the, the job? And I think this is this is very, uh, the, the, this, this tidal wave that is coming. And uh, this is actually, okay, so how can I really uh like leverage industrial like fourth industrial revolution to to bring it uh to my factory in order to save jobs to save like people pe exactly. pe people salaries yeah that is that is very interesting that we what we see in in companies is that the companies that implement industry for zero they don't uh, um, uh, they don't have to to um to dismiss people because they are growing because they now they are they are capable of of getting new markets uh, they also have new business model they need more people to provide services for instance so it's it's really that what we we saw and the and the on the other side the, the companies that don't or will not implement this uh, this technology they will uh, uh, lose their the their, their employees because the company will will not be anymore uh, competitive for the others okay 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 so we have this we have this uh smart uh, smart working covered uh yeah. so enhancing the job so this is very i think this is very cyberpunk type of theme that is happening exactly. you know all these like uh sci-fi concepts of augmentation exactly. and and <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, and cyber implementation so and this is super fascinating uh, as, yeah. as a hardcore sci-fan fan sure. it's super fascinating uh, so we have smart factory covers. So what are the two other dimensions? Okay. Here? Uh, the other dimension, these are the internal dimension because we are thinking about the, the inside the companies. And then we have the uh, the other two dimension are a smart supply chain and a smart product and services. So the smart supply chain is you um, thinking about the industry for your technologies to uh, integrate all of your supply chain. So you have okay. it also because when we when we usually think about industry for zero, we think about a, a, a vertical integration. So how our data can uh, can be in anywhere, uh, uh, or the data of the company can be 
in anywhere at any time. Uh, mm -hmm. But now we think about the uh, supply chain. So our company sharing um, sharing uh, data in real time with our uh, my providers, but also with my pro my pro uh, with my distributors and by with my uh, vendors and the, uh, also with the with the customers. So integrate this uh, supply chain. Also, we when talk with supply chain, we talk about uh, smart. Uh, technologies as um, um, autonomous uh, vehicles that we can use also for the logistic and to improve uh, the uh, the logistic of our uh, of our companies. So, do you think and that this autonomous thing will actually happen inside the companies? Is already happening. For instance, we have uh, one of the of the um, of the companies here that they this is a company of textile company that they have their robot the 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 mrv the mrv yeah the the the, the autonomous uh, robot for that make the logistic that they also take the elevator so they have four floors in the in the in the company so they take all the 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 materials that they need from another uh, floor and then they go to the to the production and about the integration, what what is uh, the autonomous? Uh, I think we will see the, the autonomous to to make the logistic external logistic. Probably we will see that in the in the coming years. But also that we what we have is, uh, for instance, companies uh, providers that are monitoring through Internet of Things. They are monitoring the stock of 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 their products in the. In the other company, in the in the customer company, in the in a B two B B two B B two B client, so they are monitoring the the their stock and then they are providing. Okay, I will send you more products now that you need because I know that you are consuming that. So this uh, also when you you talking about the uh, lean manufacturing, now we have these technologies that uh, help us to do this just in time. Uh, a production and just in time uh, also providing just in time uh, products from one company to another okay but this is actually uh, like correct me if i'm wrong but as a practitioner and someone okay and i'm heavily into software business right i mostly do software business so so uh, uh, and and on the industrial side of the of the fourth industrial revolution i'm mostly in the cloud in the software as a service applications Great. all these things and 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 also even in business side like business models sales and marketing uh so so that's why i'm asking isn't it hard for you to actually impose this um vertical and horizontal actually horizontal in this case horizontal, integration, yeah. hb uh, horizontal integration with your like whole supply chain because like imposing anything <laughs> on the on, on, on your on your uh, supplier exactly. is a hard thing, you know. Like even I don't know if this is the case as well in Brazil as it is yeah. in Poland, but you know, having a seven days like uh, like seven days of the invoice payment is a hard thing, <laughs> rather okay. than like fourteen or thirty, right? So so if if, if getting this done is hard. What about getting? Uh, and I'm talking about the real life uh, case yeah, studies yeah. of the companies, sure. like this, like the uh, cash conversion cycles, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So how does it work for for Brazilian companies and and generally for the companies that you have encountered? Because like yeah. from from like very practical perspective, this seems like a super hard challenge. Yeah. I know that you yeah. can be Apple and impose this on Foxconn factory. <laughs> exactly, but what exactly. and this is what Tim Cook did there. But like I'm wondering if this is really applicable for a, a, a substantially smaller entities. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah. This is um, what what we we had seen is uh, first the companies started to to think in the vertical integration. So most companies that are in industry for zero are more in the in the vertical integration. And now they are starting to think in this dimension of the uh, smart supply chain. So we have uh, we have the technology and the knowledge, but yeah, as you said, this is challenging because it's, it's more than your company and only what the companies that are uh, uh, 
um, advancing in this are the big companies, uh, the, 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 the big companies that have this power to, uh, for instance, uh, General Motors, that they have this, um, suppliers and they can they can ask for the suppliers to have the same technology for the for the integration but also one of the projects that we are uh, starting now here with a company is the supplier that starts with the implementation because he is the one that today is providing the materials from the from his uh, his to his customer uh, and then they say no it's i need some is I need to integrate my supply chain with my uh, with my customer, and then the customer already is a big company that yeah. is started to in the industry for zero, and then the supplier they say, okay, I want also to to enter in this industry for zero, and then they start uh, because normally we we expect from the focal company to to take this initiative of integration, but also it can maybe maybe we can see after this uh, project. That is, uh, is is more effective from the supplier to start to um, to to this to start with the desire to integrate with the actually, with the actually it makes a lot of sense because look like who is responsible for the delivery dates for being just in time on exactly. the delivery on the production to the production facility right who is responsible for getting the product in like in the right quantity and in the right quality it all exactly. at the end of the day it all is falls. On the supplier, exactly. So, exactly. if I am a supplier, it is it is in my best like interest to actually ensure that I am connected, right? Be, exactly. And I'm not even talking about like delivery. Like you can also use this for forecasting, use this for uh, your own production, right? <laughs> because this is exactly. at the end of the day, very often this is a production in itself. Exactly. So. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree on that. So this is so. So what we're seeing right now is we are actually seeing a trend that, if this will ha be happening, it might be happening uh, as a pushing effort from suppliers rather than receivers. Exactly, exactly. That is that is because uh, it's it's funny because the, the 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 lean manufacturing what what the lean manufacturing does is is to to take okay it's not more my my risk from the focal company now it's your risk you you need to provide me this just in time uh, product i don't want to have this uh, stock here the yes so it's decentralizing the decentralizing exactly. system exactly. so so with the lean management you're still kind of uh, and we are super theoretical right now but this is like this five porters framework that uh, was established in like 70s right exactly. that there is like you as a focal point of everything and there is yeah, exactly. there are things centered around you while industry for all is actually more decentralized and network based and this is the network effect which reduces the risks yeah yeah exactly good point yeah this is actually this is super interesting super valuable thank you thank you for that so Okay, so we have three things covered. We have yeah. supply chain, we have smart working, and we have smart factory. Smart factory. Exactly. And there is smart products and services. The, right? Yeah, exactly. The last one is the smart product and services, and this I think is the is the one that brings the more is the is the one of the most uh, growth driver uh, dimension of industry for zero. That is you thinking in uh, delivering some services through mm -hmm. your product. We have now what what we have seen in the in the in the in the last year um, that companies start to produce product intelligent products smart product so they put an Internet of Things in their product but then then they try to to sell this this product to their to their um, to their customers and the customers say. Why? Why I want a, a, a more expensive machine that has industry that have IoT? I uh, say, yeah, because you will have the data. Yeah, but what what can I do with this data? So they bring again to the manufacturer the uh, responsibility to offer to use this data to offer some service and to really add value to the uh, to their customers. So mm -hmm. all companies, most of the companies, I, I, I can see that they are uh, they have this challenge. But this, of course, it means a, a, an important change in your uh, in your business model. Uh, for instance, we have this. Uh, is, this is a classical example from the General Electric. General Electric, they they name 
this, the sellers of products, they name as hunters, and the, the seller of services, they name as farmers, because they need to, 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 um, to, to make growth a relationship uh, with the, and a transfer relationship with the customers to be able to offer this service. As it's not just, okay, I sell you the service. No, I sell you the service. And now we have a contract for years where, that we will be partners more uh, than just me as the, as the seller and you as the, uh, as the customer. So this, this implies a, a big uh, challenge for the business model, uh, innovation of the companies. But also, okay, but these servitization things, they come from 10 years ago. Uh, but what is different now in, with the technology of Industry 4.0, that now the manufacturer, they can know how the, the products work in the hands of the, of the customer. Because now they can monitor, they have, they have the data, they bring this data, and not, also, not only for one of the customer, they bring for 10, 100, 1,000 customers. So they have all this data to really understand, okay, my product, the, it usually uh, breaks uh, in this part, so now I can, I can make this better in my product. And then they evolve in their business model. And they say, okay, I, I first started to sell my product and some services based on this data. Now that I really know, I have all this experience, I have all this data uh, coming from my, my product, now I can offer the product as a service because I really know how my, 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 uh, my thing works. I also, for instance, if my, if my machine uh, of, of the equipment I'm, I'm selling, it, it works, I know before it works because I have this predictive maintenance that I can do. Now I can schedule my technicians to offer these services. So everything changed when we have this connectivity that Industry for Zero brings us. So don't, this is a, one of the most important dimensions that, uh, that companies can use and can think to, uh, to improve their business and to uh, improve their, uh, their revenues from the, from the business. True, but like, isn't it like the, all these free um, things you've mentioned before? So smart factories, smart working and smart supply chain. This is more on the operation side of the business, which is about like costs, let's call it this way. While the last one is actually the only S, let's call it this way, on the forest framework, the only smart smart products and smart and uh, services. This is the only thing that drives more revenue. So is exactly, it true? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a is an eye point. Yeah, yeah. In the others, you have more efficiency and also more flexibility and more quality in your product. And then the other is thinking in the side of the uh, of the customer. Maybe when we integrate the, the smart supply chain, it's also an external dimension. You can, you can also think in your uh, inbound uh, dimension of, of, of inbound uh, supply chain, but also in the outbound, you can uh, get data from the customer also to, to improve and to, to earn more, uh, more revenue with the, because you know better the needs of your, of your customers. But all they will transform in real revenue and more revenue for the for the for the company in this dimension yeah the smart okay, product so let's and let's with let's, let's park this smart product uh, somewhere we we will come back to it because uh, this is the super important this is actually about business models but uh, i want to ask you this question which just emerged so why do you think this let's say 3 to 1 ratio of costs versus revenue in industry 4.0 what's you know like we have this framework of 4S and free are more, obviously to some extent, not 100%, but to some extent they are more focused on costs okay. while only one actually uh, is more focused on revenue. So, and this is like a clearly three to one ratio for me. So why okay. do you think this is happening? What is the, what is the reason behind? Um, I, I would not think in these uh, dimensions as um, neither concurrent between them, neither um, that you need the four dimension. You will implement your industry for zero strategy 
uh, based on one on what you want for your strategy. Maybe the company, and this is is very interesting your your question because what we see in the companies that are starting the industry for zero, the first thing that come sometimes the third the first thing that comes is maybe I can my my I, my company is not an industry for zero company, but my product is a smart, and then I don't need I don't really need to to uh, to apply industry for zero in my company, uh, but I can offer a product that is industry for zero uh, for for the customer, and then they offer services uh, attached to this uh, to this smart product, and then. They come the smart working that smart working dimension comes again. That uh, why? Because uh, for instance, uh, the Thyssen Group company of the, the elevators, uh, what they are doing to offer uh, this maintenance in the many elevators that they have, uh, they use one of the technology that is the emerging technology from Industry for Zero and also connectivity, and they have each of their of the technicians has a smart glass, okay, with connectivity, and they have. A lot of of, um, of new technicians without experience to really conduct all this uh, all this uh, maintenance, but they have an experienced technicians that is in the base of the of the of the Thyssen Group base, and then uh, this one they support the work of the others of the of the of the technicians that are in the front end. So uh, what I want to 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 say with that. Um, it doesn't mean that uh, you will you need to think first in the cost to then to think in the new business model. Maybe the new business models they can come first in your path towards industry for zero. Okay, so because the fact that I'm, for instance, having a smart working, I can offer this as a solution to someone, right? Exactly. Or exactly. the fact that I'm integrated to your supply chain gives me an ability to, I don't know, like. To charge you for warranty that I will always have this like yeah, service exactly. level agreement that I will always deliver on time. Exactly, exactly. Okay. And also we have we have this. Uh, I talked with the with the guy from the from John Deere uh, last week, I think it was. And now they are they are uh, they they know they say that we have a lot of data from our products uh, that uh, that were smart products, and now that we have all this data, we start to to to, to thinking in. in how we can use this data to improve our manufacturing also because what they say i know that some part of the of the tractor they broke more than the others so okay let's let's improve our product here inside our factory so it's one one uh, one dimension push the other also but they are in in, in part they are independent but then they push another the need of, of the other dimension yeah, I, the cool, the cool, the cool thing of this with these sensors and and uh, revenue models that I have actually uh, read uh, and the book called like monetizing innovation, which is Goodyear, they have introduced the concept of uh, tone miles, which is effectively the fact that they are selling tires with uh, sensors. They don't need to sell you the the four tires or like actually like eighteen tires because this is for trucks. Uh, but they are actually selling you the mileage, exactly. and a certain amount of tones you can you can go on it. Like you can you can you can use. So what happens? This is a usage based like pricing model that leads to being more efficient for the customers because you pay only when you you, you pay as you go, right? Effectively, you exactly. when your fleet is moving, you pay. So this is heavily integrated with supply chain. This is heavily integrated with the smart products, with the smart working thing. So this is pretty much like I think the the the, the holy grail of what the company is exactly. aiming And 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 uh, it's interesting that we we can see this if you open the LinkedIn LinkedIn now you can see a lot of of news of companies that are going to this uh, servitized uh, business model. I saw one today that is uh, SKF uh, that they are they said we are not we we don't want to sell anymore the. The ball bearing. We want to say the uh, to to sell you the um, all the services, but for you to not worry anymore about your ball bearing. So they say that the, our customer, the best the best for our customer is to don't even know that they have a, a ball bearing uh, 
uh, running in their machines because they only know they only pay attention in that when there is not working. So you yeah, they is is yeah. you uh, sell more value from from the from the yeah. customer. Like the Rolls customer Royce engines, they need to work in order to leave <laughs> exactly. the plane. If they are not working, with exactly. people die, right? So this exactly. is exactly yeah. So, so 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 yeah. So I get it. So let's go back to our our. Uh, our uh, business models conversation and then the, the product and the smart products and smart services because we are actually kind of revolving around that. Okay. Um, so do you have any cool case studies of the companies uh, either in Brazil or in Europe um, that that actually implemented and, and this done something like that and it actually transformed because I'm not talking about like small operational improvement and I'm, I, okay. I'm actually talking about this as what the Christian Sen would call the innovative disruption, right? Like okay, that yeah. actually disrupted their entire business models. Do you have any examples like that? Uh, many, many uh, uh, cases. Let's think uh, one one that is uh, B2C. Uh, I think one of the of the best cases is the Scania uh, from the from the trucks. And um, because if you go to the Scania, uh, Go go to the other brands of, of trucks and then go to the to the Scania. You will not see them there selling trucks. They will you will see them selling services. So they say they we monitor. We can we can offer you a fleet management. We can offer you a training, monitoring the uh, how the 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 tires and other parts of the of the truck uh, will. Uh, you, and uh, we help you to to manage this maintenance that you have to do this preventive maintenance we monitoring we monitor your drivers and also we offer uh, courses for your drivers to 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 drive better the, the the trucks so this and and this is in an interesting case maybe you can you can see in youtube i don't know if in youtube you have some some probably you have some some um, some webinars or something uh, but I, I I saw a speech of the of a guy from from Scania, and they what how, how they develop their business model uh, because uh, before that they they just uh, were a, a truck manufacturer. They saw them as a they themselves yeah. as a truck manufacturer, and then they uh, uh, they they need to understand all the journey of the of the customer, how they use, what are the pains that they have. Also in the in the uh, in the course I, I give about a product service system I I use the some of the tools they use it that is uh, to understand what is the journey of your customer and then you implement these services because it's a pain from the from the customer and also one of the of, of the interesting cases that uh, that is a more a B two B case is the one from Festo Festo is the is a company in, I think it's Italian company. Uh, Festo is from is um, from um, all all about movement of a uh, pin, pinematical movement of uh, of, uh, of of machines of or everything that needs uh, pinematical uh, things, and then they started to to understand what they can offer as 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 a service, and then they understand that. If they put some sensors in the in their equipment, they can monitor just one small thing that maybe is not a big pain from the for for their customers. So what they what what they understood is okay, but if I have this sensor implemented in the in my in my machines, and then I can also get the data from the other sensors of the machines, I can offer a value through. Uh, improving uh, and to giving to the to the to the customer uh, to the factories the data about the efficiency the overall equipment efficiency of the the o the oee the overall equipment efficiency of their of their machine and now they offer that okay they they have a software and they sell the this uh, this um, indicator the monitoring of the indicator from the machines and then now they present as engineers of optimization engineers they present themselves so when they go to your company they don't want you to, to they don't go saying i will say i will sell you my product no i will sell you uh, an optimization more productivity productivity engineers that is the 
is the is the way they they sell themselves their their vendors. So they go there and they say, okay, I can help you with this part that is the product I, I produce, but also I can help you you to have more data to uh, improve the management of your factory. But this is this is super interesting. This is actually uh, uh, like very success based kind of right with the with generally with the with the production you can very easily show the impact of what you're doing like this this will lead to xyz number of hours time money saved and this is actually amazing and this is by the way a, a lesson which i will actually i would copy from from this webinar for my for our software as a service clients and also like startups because like what they do is like, you know we sell the like just for what we can learn from the industrial perspective, what other like businesses that we would say that are on the front forefront of innovation would learn? Because very often we, I see personally as 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 a as, as a consultant, I see startups and companies. You know, we sell CRM software. We sell uh, we sell software for webinars, right? We sell um, marketing automation software, and you know all these yeah. things. While they don't necessarily communicate and don't necessarily say, you know, we are saving like 10 hours for SMB SMB owners uh, every month, right? And considering that your hour is like 100 euros, this is how much money we are actually saving you. So uh, this, this, is, this is something that we, we could learn from these companies for sure. Because so what you should actually sell is you should sell value. And for what I understand, uh, industry for all is an actually a way to drive far more value for the for the mm -hmm. for the manufacturing companies than they could ever have with the lean management TQM exactly. and Six Sigma. Exactly, exactly. Because uh, sometimes the the same software and the capabilities that you need to offer your mm -hmm. service from your product, they allow you to to offer service for for other products even maybe from your competitors if you if you yeah. can get the data from the from the machines and from the equipment of the others and your customer they are they are worried about to for you to solve in their problem they are worried if you who are you uh, see if you if you have a contract that uh, that you will maybe have a, a a service level agreement from them okay they will they will uh, thank you for that and don't they don't be worried about sharing the more data with you sure sure yeah that's a, that's that's super awesome like thank you for that so uh we're slowly moving to towards our um our, at the end of the of the of the today's webinar uh i just mm, wanted to ask you if there is something that you would also like to share to with our audience that we haven't discussed yet or that you think is super important as a parting words? Yeah. Effectively. Um, I will have a lot of things that I would like to, <laughs> of to <course>. share. <laughs> but maybe uh, because because this last dimension, uh, I learned from the last for the for the in the in the last because I know that i I'm I'm suspicious to talk about that. I, I really like this this because of oh, how my, my my whole PhD was in this in this topic. And but uh, what I can, I can maybe we can have a, another just specific for this smart product and service uh, system. But uh, what I would like to to to, to say is that um, you never, you never, uh, if you are a, a manager from a company, you you should never say something that I usually uh, hear from 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 companies that it industry for zero is not for my company. I'm sure that industry for zero is for your for your company. You have many possibilities of uh, to apply these technologies for for in your company. Maybe some punctual, uh, uh, but if you if you apply these punctual solutions of industry for zero, you need to do it uh, thinking in the in the whole journey. Okay, but I'm not yet uh, ready because I need to to implement lean. Okay, implement lean, but also think in this path. To be to be lean implementation and also industry for zero and thinking in in both um, uh, lines of concept to be implemented uh, in parallel because we are in a hurry already. Uh, companies uh, is industry for zero is not anymore uh, the future. Uh, I uh, the um, 
the, the French, uh, in France, they, they call the program from industry for zero, industry of the future. I think this, this is wrong because this is the industry of, of the present. You know, we, we, mm -hmm. uh, you, you need to understand that your, if you don't uh, implement, implement these technologies or you don't start your, your journey and you see, this is it's not a, a, a plug and play uh, journey. You need to, to is it some years that you will need to understand what you need to implement first and then you need to, the infrastructure to to be able to extract the data and to and also create the capabilities in your in your uh, in your employees. So start now. You need to start now. And okay, but I don't know what really what is really uh, industry for zero. Okay, make a course of of industry for zero to understand the big picture of the industry for zero, and then make some partnership for the for the deep things. You don't need to to know everything about uh, artificial intelligence and to make the algorithm of industry for zero mm -hmm. for uh, of, of uh, artificial intelligence you need to know how to apply artificial intelligence to solve your problem and then you will have a startup uh, or a company to to develop this for for you so yeah so exactly what you said is like something that we it is emerging and i think this is a myth of uh, industry for all is like you need to have everything it's it's not it doesn't work this way you don't need to have you know there's this framework wheel that you probably know and i think this framework has done more bad things than good things because it actually uh, you know when you're presenting something as a wheel framework it kind of makes people think that okay so this is very holistic it's 360 per like degree view i need to have it all while industry 4.0 is very selective in a sense that you need to, you know, it's like Lego blocks that you take part of it and part of it and part of it and you try to build something on it. Yeah. This is more like agile software development or, or exactly. generally like test and learn and, you know, prototype and scale rather than you need to, you know, put 5 million euros exactly. into the into the factory and, you know, see if and, and, and implement everything. And this is something exactly. that, uh, that 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 again mm, comes to to our conversation. Great, excellent. So, uh, Nestor, thank you a lot for this webinar. I, I think we like we had a really amazing conversation on the uh, on these topics. Like, I think we have really pretty covered these four S things, and uh, obviously a little bit uh, too shallow because we naturally yes. need to deep dive into it. Uh, but this webinar was officially sponsored and organized by Stanversity, which is like an educational startup bringing the best professors like Professor Nestor Fabian Ayala from uh, Brazil to universities worldwide. And if you want to know a little bit more about our program and what Nestor can tell you during our course, please visit our website, which is industry.stanversity.com. This is where you can actually learn more because we definitely prove that the knowledge you have uh, is super valuable and uh, that uh, you can teach a lot on that. So, and I'm just, you know, I would love to stay for additional hour <laughs> and to hear a Me little too. bit more, uh, but, you know, like we, we, we can't, uh, we, we don't have much time. So anyway, thank you a lot for, for, for being here and, 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 and uh, contributing so much uh, to, thank to the you. audience. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your invitation. And yeah, let's, let's see uh, back again in another webinar or directly in the, in the course. Yeah, we have this, uh, we have this uh, question. Yeah, the uh we're going to share it as the recorded version hati uh, we're going it, it is on youtube if you look at stanversity you will find it on youtube i will share it on my social media feed and uh, nestor will do as well and uh, but in worst case uh, scenario we'll always find it on youtube just type stanversity you'll find all our podcasts and webinars there uh, and they will be also uploaded on the website as we go right so 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 definitely definitely something to come back to this will this will happen because we really don't want to lose it 
Okay. Um, thank you a lot and looking forward to our uh, our course starting end of May. Uh, so it's a, it's a great like 15 weeks program and you'll be part of it. So uh, I'm super excited on that. Thank you, Nestor. Thank and you. Looking forward. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.